when land predators clash with ocean killers. The domains of land and sea are generally considered to be complete opposites of each other, and it's not hard to see why. However, one thing they do have in common is the fact that both are home to fairly strict hierarchies and food chains. At the top of these food chains sit dominant killers known as apex predators. Interestingly, sometimes apex predators from below the waves find themselves straying too far into the realms of land predators, or vice versa. Today's video is essentially a close look at a few examples of land-based apex predators and the oceanic killers they may cross paths with. Does violence occur when such predators meet? And if so, who comes out on top? And why? Well, let's talk about it. Nile Crocodile versus Bull Shark Africa is one of the world's last bastions for truly immense and amazing predators. Lions, leopards, hyenas, wild dogs, martial eagles, cheetahs, you name it. The continent has them in spades and each of them is right at the top of their game. However, there is one animal with a reputation so frightening that everyone takes special care when approaching its habitat. An animal regarded as the deadliest vertebrate in Africa to humans, the Nile crocodile. Having been around for tens of millions of years, this species of crocodilian is the second largest on Earth today behind the enormous saltwater crocodile. Like most crocs, the Nile species is highly adaptable and it can live in and around inland freshwater bodies or deltas and the sea itself. Salt water is no problem for them because they have special desalination glands that remove excess salt from their systems. However, the sea also brings something crocs can't deal with as easily – bull sharks. Among the most feared of all sharks, the bull shark is a bulky, no-nonsense killing machine with unquestionable apex predator status. This shark species is also famed for its ability to live in both saltwater and freshwater environments. Its liver and kidneys, among other organs, are key in regulating its blood salt levels so it can survive. In Africa, bull sharks come from the sea and swim into estuaries and rivers to breed and hunt. They even swim as far as several hundred miles inland, deep into crocodile country. Like crocs, bull sharks are highly opportunistic predators that can go after a wide range of prey. Fish, crabs, snakes, lizards, and a wide range of mammals and birds are just some of the menu items when they venture into freshwater. Oftentimes, the freshwater bodies are big enough for both apex predators to do their respective things, especially considering that most breeding sharks go to freshwater during the rainy summer months. Thanks to slow metabolisms, crocs don't actually need to eat that often so they spend most of their time basking on the banks or patrolling the shallows. So what would happen if these two apex assassins were to cross paths? Well, there are a few factors. Depth is one of them. In shallow water, a croc may be just agile enough to grab hold of any of the shark's vulnerable fins. The bull shark may be aggressive, but at up to 500 pounds, it would have to be very careful not to get beached. After all, Nile crocs are arguably the most social crocodilian species, with groups sometimes exceeding 100. A beached shark would be a feast for the ages for the old dinosaurs. Bull shark pups are common croc prey in breeding periods too, which is another L for the bull shark. But it's not all bad news though, especially if we take things to open water. Deeper waters grant the shark more maneuverability, especially to attack the crocodile from below. Nasty serrated teeth and immense bite force can make quick work of the armored reptile's fairly vulnerable underbelly. Of course, a croc would take some killing, especially when you consider that the Nile species can weigh up to three times as much as the shark. It's difficult to call, but if it came down to a full-on fight for survival, it's hard to bet against the Nile crocodile. Polar Bear vs. Orca Winter in the frozen north is a wonderland of pack ice and ice islands. Stretches of the Arctic Ocean shimmer as frozen plains, littered with the occasional air hole for the local seal population. The seals themselves frolic and feed from northern Canada to Russia and Svalbard, while the barking mammals focus on their fish and colony politics, two of their deadliest enemies are focused on them. At one end, the polar bear the biggest predator on land right now and the ice king of the north. 
On the other end, the ocean's most feared and complex predator, the orca. Both beasts are fine-tuned to track and trace prey with ruthless efficiency. The bear boasts incredible power, a powerful nose, and a relentless cunning attitude required to survive the harsh Arctic. The orca, or killer whale, even though it's in the dolphin family, has even more size and power, excellent intelligence in puzzle solving, and complex social dynamics and teamwork. In a one-on-one -on -one in the water, though, the bear would be virtually defenseless against the orca's far superior swimming and overall underwater combat prowess. Such a fight would be over in seconds, unless the orca and its friends want to play with their food. That said, conditions may not always be in the orca's favor. Its relentless pursuit of blubbery seals can sometimes lead to more than a little trouble. Younger, less experienced orcas have been known to lose focus on things like depth during seal hunts. Sometimes, this lack of concentration can result in a classic beaching, which is a bad spot to be in. With no limbs to use for walking back to the water, getting unbeached can be a challenge and sometimes impossible. In such a scenario, the odds flip heavily in the polar bear's favor. With the orca's movement compromised, the bear can simply skip to the vulnerable spots like the underparts and the fins. Their jaws and teeth are made for ripping through blubber-rich animals, and not many mammals are as blubber-rich as an orca. That said, direct confrontations, let alone violence between the two species, are wholly unreported outside of beached whale cases, which are pretty rare anyway. For the most part, these two apex predators stay in their own lanes, and these lanes hardly ever merge. Their common interest in seals is generally the one thing most likely to bring them together, but even then, it's hardly like they are in direct competition because they get their seal fix from different markets. In fact, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that they are actually complementary and mutually beneficial predators. Think about it. A marauding bear on the ice or beach will likely scare a colony of seals, which would prompt them to seek refuge in the water, the orca's hunting ground. The reverse is true too. The presence of hungry orcas in the area is an unspoken signal to head for land in seal language. But sometimes, there are equally hungry bears on the land being headed for. Reticulated Python versus Saltwater Crocodile The lush forests and sprawling swamps of Southeast Asia are a vibrant ecosystem that support an impressive range of wildlife. Sweet sunshine and generous rainfall make for a legendary paradise. From small insects to giant Asian elephants and everything in between, there are animals of all shapes and sizes. And this teeming life is precisely why this part of the world is also crawling with some of nature's greatest predators. Jungle cats, wolves, birds of prey, badgers, and mongooses are among the most iconic hunters exploiting the local fauna. However, the tropical climate is especially important for reptiles which are highly reliant on external environments to regulate their body temperatures. Snakes, crocodiles, lizards, turtles, and their respective food sources abound in this region's many habitats. Amphibians, which form a part of balanced diets for many of these reptiles, also benefit in similar ways. At the top of the reptile kingdom sits a pair of ancient overlords that have tussled with each other for at least several million years. The reticulated python and the saltwater crocodile. At over 23 feet on average, the python is the world's longest snake species, while the salty's high-end weight of a literal ton makes it the world's heaviest reptile. Both are adaptable and opportunistic apex predators whose respective prey niches may overlap from time to time. In fact, each one often finds itself on the other's menu quite often. This particular clash is Asia's version of the timeless war between crocodilians and giant constricting serpents. Pythons are long, muscular, living ropes that move elegantly over the ground, in the trees, and the water. They can go far out to sea when needed, though they tend to stay resident in set home ranges. Saltwater crocs are much more eager for sea voyages, and they've been island hopping in Southeast Asia since the dinosaurs ruled the world. Today, salties reign as the most dominant reptile species on the planet and certified man-eaters. From India to Australia, these monsters could be lurking in any lake, river, or innocent-looking pond. Mindlessly diving into under-investigated bodies of water in this region may be the last thing you ever do. 
more than 5,000 psi of bite force can shatter a person's anatomy in no time. The python is very dangerous to humans, too, especially on slippery terrain or in the water. But what happens when they collide with each other? In reality, it depends. A one-on-one -on -one clash between a crocodile and a python would probably go the croc's way because of its size, teeth, and armor. In fact, pythons are a bit of a delicacy for the saltwater dinosaurs. However, snakes have an advantage over smaller crocodiles. Pythons are far more efficient at finding and raiding croc nests than crocs are at doing the same to the snake's nests. Juvenile and sub-adult salties are still the perfect size for an adult python to swallow whole, armor and all. Ultimately, the Southeast Asian wilderness is more than big enough to accommodate several apex predators with selective but fluid niches. In other words, while pythons and crocodiles cross paths and battle often, they spend much more time focused on other things, including much less dangerous potential prey.